Well, folks, in today's video, we're going to be seeing if we can get this vintage Tyco New Haven E7 running again. This is a locomotive which I picked up off of eBay, and uh, it's not in such great shape. The drive is seized. You can see there's a ton of grease and hair, all, all sorts of really bad stuff in there. Not so great to look at, really. And uh, yeah, today we're going to see if we can manage to get this thing right in the rails once again. This is probably going to be one of the uh, trickier jobs, but uh, it could be exciting. It's also what I think is a, a pretty cool looking engine, so it would be nice to see it uh, ripping around the layout again. I'll take it over to the track, I'll show you what it's doing. It might light up if I remember correctly, but we'll have to see. Anyway, let's begin. Doing a test like this can really reveal a lot about the condition of a locomotive and uh, if I give this thing some power I'll show you exactly what I mean by that. So I'm putting 8 volts in the track, sometimes these things don't get power so you have to jiggle them around and we do have a light now and we have high current draw which probably means the motor is trying to go. I'll try putting it in reverse. Oh, we actually have uh, some smoke coming out the windows, so I've just cut the power, but uh, yeah, that's a sign that the motor's trying to go. Hopefully that's stuff burning in the commutator, because if it's not, we might have a bad coil in the motor, in which case this is going to be a lot more trouble. Anyway, let's take it over to the workbench and see if we can get it going. So we're going to try to crack this thing open and see if we can fix it all up. Smoke coming out the windows is a pretty bad sign and is also the exact reason you never want to... Uh, force an engine that's not moving uh, to move with power because you can very well burn out the motor and it's possible I did some damage to the motor just doing that little test. Hopefully not. In a lot of cases it's just the commutator which just needs to be cleaned but if it's a coil then uh, there's not really as much you can do other than replacing the whole armature so we'll have to check the coils. Anyway uh, once you get into here and I've unclipped that upper part you kind of squeeze this piece in and uh, just kind of twist it a little bit. Sometimes it comes off better on the other side. We'll see if that's the case in this engine. There we go. And uh, we'll also remove these bottom screws right here. Wow, look at those gears. Somebody put a lot of grease in this. Oh my goodness, this is so bad. Wow, this is really seized. I've decided I think I'm going to try to remove the brushes properly. I don't always do this because sometimes the plastic's in really poor shape, but we'll try, I think, to do it on this particular model. You do have to be careful, though. There are springs, and uh, there's one of them. That's a, that's a bad spring right there, actually. See how it's super compressed? That should be uh, quite a bit larger than it is, so I might have to do something about that. And we'll see if the brush comes out. Yeah, that right there is not a great sign. Well, here we are inside. It really does look like somebody oiled the commutator and they might not have done it intentionally, but what can happen is on uh, these motors, you've got this bearing right here, which is right beside the commutator. So if you put a bit of oil just a little too much, uh, it will kind of wick down this. And uh, as the whole uh, piece spins, it will actually spit the oil out onto the commutator where it will start burning. So that's probably where that smoke was coming out, but uh, either way, it's not a great sign. I'll check the coils on the motor. There's a, a good chance. Yeah, those do look like they've been burnt. That's, uh, this is all really not a good sign in a motor. It might still work for a while, but in all likelihood, this is overheated pretty badly and could be burning. So, I don't know. It might work, but we'll have to see. The commutator, other than the oil, actually does not 
look super bad. I don't know. Let's check the gaps. In a lot of cases, this is where smoke in a motor comes from. I'm not so sure that this is one of them, just given how bad the coils look, but we'll try cleaning those out, see it might make a difference. It's not gonna make it worse, that's one thing. And we're just gonna clean this all up with a fiberglass pencil. What I'm about to do next here is not something that I'd really recommend doing. I've got these two test leads here with 16 volts going to them and I'm gonna put them directly on the motor to see if it turns relatively well. Um, this is not something you know I would usually do but I don't wanna put this whole thing back together just to discover it has a bad armature. So we're gonna test it out here and see how, see how it does. Well. I'm not applying much pressure and it does seem to be turning relatively well. That's a lot better than I was expecting. Now it's doing a, a fine RPM but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's in good shape because it's very possible this thing might not be putting out much torque. Um, but it's a better sign than I was expecting. So yeah, that's that's one thing that's looking okay for this engine. But yeah, with the condition of these coils I'm frankly surprised. We'll have to see though when it's under load. Will it still perform okay? Anyway, uh, until then, I'm gonna wash this whole block down with some warm soapy water because this has so much grease on it, it's not even funny. And uh, I've also got a whole bunch of these wheel sets which are just as bad. Well, I've now got the block kind of cleaned up after about a half hour of work. This was really bad. Even dish soap and warm water plus a toothbrush couldn't take off a lot of the grease. I actually had to uh, use some WD-40 to get a lot of it off. And uh, it came out okay. The metal is not in great shape, but uh, I don't know. It seems to be a bit of a common theme for this engine, but hopefully it will all work together. I also cleaned up all the other parts, so we can pretty much start reassembling this whole thing now. I will begin by adding a little bit of oil to all of these components right here. And we'll put a fair bit, because uh, a lot of the gears do rub up against the metal, so you want to make sure these areas are lubricated. Brushes look fine, but uh, we are gonna have to do something about those springs. This is not a good tactic if you want something to perform really well, but in this case, we're just trying to kind of resurrect this engine and everything else is not in such good shape, so it's not gonna be a prime engine anyway, but if you just kind of rotate the springs, you can kind of stretch them back out and they will usually work for a while longer. So it is now quite a bit of time later, and here's where things are at with the motor. If I apply power to it, you can see that uh, nothing happens. But if I kind of wiggle the motor around a bit, it will sort of go for a bit. So in all likelihood, this is probably a problem with the brushes, but it could also be with the armature. So I guess what I could try to do is try to find some brushes for this, replace those and see if it makes a difference. But if that doesn't work, we're in for a lot more trouble. This is the funny thing that you can see, like after what I've done, like these are working properly. It's possible there isn't enough tension, but I don't know. That doesn't look too bad to me. All right, so what I did was I uh, found a spring, which seems to be pretty good. It looks to be about the right tension, but it was too long, so I cut it in half to make uh, two springs. So we're gonna try to install those and see if they'll work. I'm not 100% sure if 
this is going to give us the result we want, but hey, you know what? It's better than not trying. What do all of you think? Is it going to start? Folks, let's try cranking up the volts a bit. I mean, it's got it running, but this is not strong. Nice. Well, unfortunately, I think that that armature is in fact kaput. Well, given the condition of the previous motor, I've managed to find this other spare parts one. The coils look to be in fairly good condition, so I think this one should serve us well. So all we need to do now is start reassembling this whole thing, and hopefully this will all work. I haven't tested this motor, so I don't know for a fact that it's good, but by the looks of it, it does seem quite a bit better. So let's get to that. I also found some spare parts springs, which was uh, quite a lucky thing. All right, moment of truth. Yeah, that does not sound half bad. Certainly quite a bit better than the previous motor. So now all we need to do is put all the gears back in place. Just put a bit of solder on this right here to hold it all in place. It's not my preferred method of doing things because it does risk melting this gear right here, but I don't have any CA on hand, so it's kind of the best option I have at the moment because this was pretty loose. Anyway, I'm about to install the wheels again, but they're pretty dirty, so we're going to clean those up before we go putting them back in place, and then they should be good to go. Actually, I'll just put the wheels in place and I'll let the motor do the cleaning. I think it's going to be strong enough. Well, I got those wheels looking all nice and shiny, so I think this thing is ready to go for a test run. Let's take her to the track. I really hope to see this thing run, because the amount of time I put in on that motor was quite a bit, and I had to replace it anyway, so okay. Let's hope for the best here, everyone. Mm-hmm. Oh, there we go, she's running. A little weak, but uh, well, it's starting to pick up speed a bit. Yeah, I like to see that. Very nice. I certainly would not call this the trickiest repair I've ever done, but uh, it was a difficult one. So to see this thing running around the layout is really something quite special. I mean, we started off with an engine which didn't run whatsoever, and here it is running moderately well. Current draw has come down a little bit too, so that's all good. We'll let it uh, run around a little more. Hopefully it'll break in, and then maybe we can pull some cars with it. Well, it's now about four minutes later. I let this thing run in both directions for about two minutes to help it break in. And I think it is running a fair bit better. It's not perfect. These old Tycos rarely, you know, ever run that well. But for what it is, I think it's actually a decent runner. I'm kind of surprised considering the condition this thing was in. If I run it forwards here, you can see what kind of uh, low speed it can do. 
and um, like for an old power torque that is pretty good right there so I'm uh, very impressed anyway why don't we get this thing uh, hooked up to some cars and we'll uh, run it around with those all right looks like it's time to go out for a rip Well, folks, that's going to be it for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed. I have to admit that this engine was quite a challenge to get going again, but seeing it ride the rails once again really does put a smile on my face, and I hope it did the same thing for you. Anyways, with that, I'd like to thank you all so much for watching.